Uh, we're back with Senator Bill Wilikowski, of course, talking about the House Bill 110 that Sean Parnell has introduced and wants to roll back, uh, well, ACES that he thought was such a great idea a couple of years ago. Um, and a couple of questions for you. And for all of these slides, because I know that you're going to want to send them to your friends, uh, we'll have these up at ShannonMoore.com for you, also the mudflats.net. So you'll have those. Um, so you were talking about exploration a little bit. Yeah, we were talking about exploration. And, and we, we talked about capital costs and how they're way up on the North Slope. One of the arguments that you hear a lot of from the oil industry is that, well, those are for maintenance costs, right? And so we went back and we actually pulled the document and we, we said, well, what, what, you know, go, what was Governor Parnell saying about this just last year? And, and this is a document that uh, is from the Alaska Department of Revenue. And they asked this exact question, are you increasing spending levels due to maintenance costs? And remember, capital expenditures are the expenditures for drilling, seismic studies, production. Here's what they said. Uh, that third line there, the majority of growth in capital expenditures since 2007 is attributable to drilling, seismic, and other production-related purposes or projects. So not for just like fixing up no. and getting the rust off no. and shoving a pig nope. through or nope. whatever it is. And, and they said the same thing as far as the operating expenditures. Operating expenditures would be money that you spend to hire people for jobs and things like that. And we do, we do have a lot of people still working. Uh, are we able to get the numbers yet on how many of those jobs are Alaskan jobs? Uh, well, you know, unfortunately, um, let's go to let's go two slides forward, and then let's let's look at how the jobs are doing since we passed ACES. Okay. Because okay? because that's a great question. Because that's the other thing you hear, right? There's no jobs on the North Slope, right? They've all gone since we passed ACES. Let's look at the let's look at the data. And th again, and this is this is numbers? not my slide. This is not my slide. These are this is data from the Department of Labor, Governor Parnell's Department of Labor. Has he seen it? <laughs> it's there now. <laughs> okay. It, it, and, and again, there's a line there, and that line is when PPT was passed, right? Remember, 07 was when ACES was passed. And what you see is since ACES passed in 07, you have jobs increasing in 08. You have jobs increasing in 09. In fact, 2009, we hit an all-time high on the North Slope. We've never had as many people working on the North Slope as we had in 2009. What happened in 2008, 2009? We had the worldwide recession. Jobs did, did dip off a little bit in 2010. But the interesting thing is, look over to the left. We're in 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. You see jobs dipping. That's when we have the 0% tax rate. Jobs are going down under the 0% tax rate. And still today, in 2010, we are much higher than we were under the 0% tax regime. And so, that's, so that's a big fib? The numbers are the numbers. I mean, you know, yeah. these, these are the numbers, right? Now, you, we talk about Alaska Hire, and Alaska Hire is a huge problem on the North Slope. We, we actually have, uh, I've actually talked to, I have very good reason to believe that 50 to 60 percent, uh, I know, in, in certain locations on the North Slope is, is people that don't work in Alaska, are people from Oklahoma and you Texas. You mean they don't live here? They don't live in Alaska, right? They don't, yeah, they don't well, live Well, they've got huge planes going back and forth every day of people that, That's right. that they, well, they might be adding to our economy if they buy the like $14 bottle of water at the airport. Right, right. no, what these guys do is they do two weeks on, two weeks off. So they'll fly up from, uh, from Oklahoma or Texas, they'll land at the Anchorage airport, and then they're straight off up to, up to the North Slope. They don't spend a dime. You know, maybe if they buy a bottle of Coke or something, that's it. But we, we capture nothing of that. And, and we know there are literally thousands of them working on the North Slope. So uh, let's go. To, now, I want to compare this to, you look, take a look at this slide again. And then let's go to the next slide and compare. Again, this is a little bit hard to see. But, but what this slide does is it tracks, uh, in the blue is the rate of jobs in Alaska, the number of jobs working on the, on the oil patch in, in Alaska. And the red line is, is the United States. And, and what you see is, again, during the period when we had the 0% tax rate, you see jobs are declining sl slightly while they're increasing in the rest of the, in the, rest of the country. Okay? And then you, you look, uh, you go over towards 2008, 2009, you see there is a, a, a large dip in the number of jobs in, in lower 48. And, and you didn't see that large dip in Alaska, even though we had ACEs in place. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay. One of the other arguments you hear a lot of is how many companies are doing business in Alaska? Have we increased? Have we decreased? What was happening under the old tax structure was the oil companies were literally making billions of dollars and taking that money and shipping it outside. They were shipping it to countries like Libya with the 98% tax rate, like Russia with the 90% tax rate, very unstable governments, right? And so what we said with ACES was we're gonna, we are going to increase our tax rate and, and, and try to get our fair share 
But if you, re if you try to take that money outside, but if you reinvest that money in Alaska, we are going to give you extremely generous tax credits. And, and so all you need to look at, because what was happening was on the North Slope, you had three major oil companies, BP, Conoco, Exxon, who, were, who basically had complete control of the basin. If you want to increase production, if you want to increase development on the North Slope, you need more competition. That was a key driver for us in passing ACEs. Did it work? Let's look. 2006, this is the first year that tax filings were made public, right? We had 19 companies fought doing business on the North Slope. 2007, we had 26. 2008, we had 36. 2009, we had 39. We, it, it's worked exactly as it was supposed to. We've seen more than a doubling of the number of companies filing tax returns for work done on the North Slope. So twice as many since ACES came in. That's how many that's, companies now you have. That's right. That's right. And we've got we've got new new companies on the North Slope. There's an exciting new company called Great Bear. Just gave a presentation to the Senate Resources. They're called Just, what? Great Bear. Great Bear. Just gave a presentation on Saturday uh, to the Senate Resources. They just bought 500,000 acres of land on the North Slope. They believe there are tremendous. I could get, I could talk about this for hours because they did on Saturday. They they. Uh, <laughs> They believe there are billions, hundreds of billions of barrels of oil that have not yet been tapped, shale oil. It's, and you know, five years ago, no one was talking about shale gas in the lower 48. We've got the, some of the best shale oil reserves on the North Slope. They are predicting in the next 10 years, they are going to add, now Trans-Alaska Pipeline is running 600,000 barrels a day. They are predicting in the next decade, they will add a million barrels per day to the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. And this is reserve. a new company. This is a brand new company. Okay, so there's a brand new company that's come to Alaska who predicts that they'll put a million barrels a yes. day extra yes. in, the, in taps, and yet they came in under ACES, yes. and that that seemed like a good enough deal to them? Came in under ACES. Go to, let's go to the next one. And you'll see, this is another company that's coming called Savant. Here's a quote from Savant. Alaska is open for business, and a big incentive is the ACES legislation. Yes! So, now, so has, has, has he been fired yet? <laughs> I, I, apparently he didn't get the memo. Uh, let's go to the next one. I want to show you. Now, how, how generous are the Alaska incentives? They're literally among the top five in the world, according to a, a Parnell consultant, Governor Parnell consultant, uh, Rich Ruggiero, who just testified before House Resources. This is a slide from last year which talks about the, the incentives. It's, it might be a little hard to read. But and is, is this Sean Parnell's slide? This is a Governor Parnell slide. Yes, it is. I bet he colored it. The, the, actually, the person, that <laughs> the, the person that presented this slide and the person that presented a number of these slides has, has since been fired. Um, but the, uh, what, this, what this shows is, let's BP Conoco Exxon, they decide to go out and, do, and drill a new well and do new exploration, right? The incentives in Alaska are so great that the state of Alaska actually picks up 76% of the share of that new well. If that, if that well costs $100 million to develop, the state of Alaska picks up, the, in, a, in a development project, 76% of that project. The federal government picks up 8% because they get tax breaks, and the company ends up paying, picking up 15%. These so, are so phenomenal you, incentives. So if, if, they, if they go up, they try to dig a hole, whatever they call it, they do a drilling, and it comes up with nothing. Yeah. Then for every dollar we pay seventy six. We, we actually write a check to these companies uh, for we actually write a check for about sixty percent, and then they get tax write offs for the, the remainder. That yeah. is so nice of us. It's pretty nice of us. Yeah. God, you would think that they would talk about this <laughs> yeah. more, like a yeah. thank you card. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, that's yeah. That's Let's, a pretty good deal. How many? How many are? not successful? I mean, how many times are we having to write these checks? Great, great question. Uh, actually, in Prudhoe Bay, the, the, the success rate in Prudhoe Bay, it, Prudhoe Bay is one of the most prolific hydrocarbon basins in the world. Every 10 times they, they drill a well, they find oil on nine of those times. So 90%. That's yes. an A. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's an A. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next one. OK, so, so and, and you can see, I mean, with, with the incentives that we have, we look at how, how are the profits, right? The profits are staggering. The profits are absolutely phenomenal here in the state of Alaska. We have 2008, the profits in Alaska, $2.3 billion. This is for ConocoPhillips. In lower 48, they made $2.7 billion. 
2009, this is under ACES, remember, they made $1.5 billion in the state of Alaska. They actually lost $37 million in the lower 48. 2010, they made $1.3 billion in the first three quarters. They actually made another $460 million. So it's $1.7 billion in profit in 2010. In the lower 48, they made uh, $597 million. So this is Alaska compared, Alaska to, compared to everything 48, they're doing right. down there? But go to the next slide. And, and how do the profits compare to the rest of the world? For ConocoPhillips, ConocoPhillips has 12% of their worldwide investment in the state of Alaska. In, in uh, the first quarter of 2009, Alaska operations earned the company 29% of its worldwide profits. So from that 12%, they actually made 29%. In the second quarter, they actually made 55% of their worldwide profits right here in the state of Alaska. And if you look, and I didn't just pick, you know, I didn't just cherry pick these. If you look consistently, Alaska is consistently 30 to 50% of the worldwide profits for ConocoPhillips. Well, you think they'd do more than build a ball field. <laughs> let's go, let's go to the Sorry, next one. Sorry, I mean. Okay, we, we have a hard time getting the profits for BP and Conoco, or BP and Exxon. So what we did was we hired this world renowned consultant from Texas. These guys mostly represent all companies. And we said, can you guys help us figure out what, how these guys are doing? How is BP doing on the North Slope? Because they won't tell us, right? Here's what we found. We did this extensive computer model. They never objected. They never said this was wrong. What we found was, if you put your money in a bank, Shannon, what kind of interest rate are you getting? Not very maybe much. Maybe 1%. 1% You're maybe. You're lucky if you get 1%. If you put it in the stock market, a good return is 8%. The internal rate of return for BP in Prudhoe Bay is 123% at $80 a barrel oil. Yeah. Anybody here want to take that investment? OK. All right. Yeah, and I can't imagine getting that return and walking into my bank and being like, you bastards. Go, go to the next slide. You're trying to shut me down. OK. Here's a quote. How, how, how is ACES doing? The governor asked uh, two years ago, de December of 2009, the governor asked, uh, 10 oil companies, how ACE was doing. Here's a quote. Parnell also said he was ready, he, was, he has already discussed ACEs with 10 oil companies. Of those, he said four to five thought the tax system was just fine, while two or three uh, thought, thanked the state for the tax credit program, and two companies wanted to see changes. So 80% of the companies thought ACEs was either just fine or thanked the governor for it. That's a pretty good ratio. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the last slide. Uh, this is the conclusion from Governor Parnell's analysis. In general, the information does not indicate that changes in the tax system have had a direct negative impact on, in, on industry activity in the state. In fact, the data would indicate that the investment incentive provisions of ACES are contributing to increased level of expenditure. That's not my statement. That's Governor Parnell's statement last year. Bill Wilikowski's in the house. <laughs> what? <laughs> well. Well, it seems to me that the data hasn't changed, but the governor has. Something's ah. happened. I, yeah, I, so, I, something's happened. It's, it's really, really, really strange. We're going to run to a break. Senator Bill Wilikowski is here. We're going to come back with questions from our audience and uh, try to figure out just all the hinkiness that's going on with this. All right, we'll be right back.